8. Bizarre Facial Brushing As a teenager, Nancy Morell got a pimple on her upper lip and didn't think much of it. The nurse at her school told her it was an allergic reaction to ibuprofen, but it soon took the form of a strange bruise and began to spread all over her face and body. Nancy went to the hospital, where they were unable to give her a diagnosis and told her to just keep an eye on the symptoms. The college student from Buckinghamshire, England, has traveled to numerous doctors in the six years since the bizarre condition first appeared. But after being misdiagnosed, having several biopsies done and consulting multiple experts, she's no closer to finding answers than she was at the beginning of her journey. At one point, she was diagnosed with a rare condition called urticarial vasculitis, which causes periodic outbreaks of hives and lesions. But doctors have since retracted the diagnosis, putting Nancy back at square one in her effort to find effective treatment. She had no underlying conditions before the bruising started, and her twin sister doesn't suffer from the unusual ailment. The bruising comes and goes in the form of flare-ups, which have become predictable. Nancy knows she's about to get a flare-up when she starts feeling nauseous and lightheaded. It's followed by facial pain, and then the bruises appear. While she lives in pain and without answers, the one positive thing is that Nancy's gotten used to looking different and says it's given her confidence. 7. The Toxic Lady Gloria Ramirez died from cardiac arrest at a hospital in Riverside, California while battling late-stage ovarian cancer in 1994. While taking blood samples before she passed away, hospital staff noticed strange crystals in her blood and the smell of ammonia. They also noticed a strange oily sheen on her body and a garlicky odor coming from her mouth. The employee soon began to faint, convulse, vomit, and struggle to breathe. Those who remained well enough to continue working evacuated the emergency room and treated patients in the parking lot. In the meantime, a hazmat team handled the body. They found no signs of toxic gases or any other poisonous substances that could have caused people to suddenly get sick. Altogether, 23 workers fell ill and five were hospitalized. One person spent two weeks in intensive care. The coroner discovered high levels of dimethyl sulfur or DMSO in Gloria's blood. Once considered a cure-all for various diseases, it was labeled dangerous in 1965. When exposed to oxygen and room temperature, DMSO turns into a highly toxic chemical called dimethyl sulfate which can cause convulsions, delirium, paralysis, and a host of other serious symptoms. It's now suspected that Gloria used large amounts of DMSO to try treating her cancer, and that it turned into dimethyl sulfate when the hospital administered oxygen. But some disagree, including Gloria's family, who blame the hospital for her death, and the mystery remains officially unsolved. 6. Frequent Fainting Episodes for 30 years, Seattle-based conservation biologist Maureen Ryan experienced frequent fainting spells when she exercised. It started in 1991 when she was in college. She passed out at a water fountain and suffered a seizure after running on a treadmill and woke up surrounded by worried members of her school's basketball team. Assuming it was a one-time thing, Ryan walked back to her dorm and continued on with her day. The next episode happened five years later and continued sporadically from there. Because the symptoms alleviated if she rested, Ryan simply assumed she was pushing herself too hard. At one point, doctors diagnosed her with a disorder that causes an elevated heart rate. She underwent a procedure that she was told would fix the problem. So when the fainting continued, Ryan believed it was harmless. She learned to live with it and to avoid fainting by sitting down when she noticed the first signs of an episode. In 2020, some concerning new symptoms set in, including tightness in the chest. Ryan also became winded easily while exercising, but was unable to see a cardiologist due to the COVID-19 pandemic, so she took a break from running and the fainting stopped. While running in a park one day in 2022, Ryan fainted and was unable to move or speak immediately afterward. It took her several tries before she was able to stand up, and she later told the Washington Post that she felt like she was going to die. Doctors discovered that her right coronary artery originated from the wrong location. It was something she was born with 
and it was most likely causing a potentially deadly condition called aborted sudden cardiac death, which is when heart activity suddenly stops. Ryan underwent open-heart surgery to reposition the artery and endured a lengthy recovery, which came with months of cardiac rehab. She was a bit bummed after learning that it can take three years to feel fully normal again. But the fainting has stopped, and the experience has taught her to recognize signs that something's wrong with her body more seriously. 5. Sudden Mobility Loss – Stumps Doctors Nancy Shiancone was 46 when her fingers periodically started going numb and turning white. She was diagnosed with a relatively common condition called Raynaud's disease, which is when arteries that supply blood to the hands constrict excessively in response to the cold. Around the same time, she tested positive for lupus and began treatment, but subsequent tests turned out normal and the treatment was stopped. Shiacone's pain began to worsen and was accompanied by inflammation. She tested negative for rheumatoid arthritis, but her doctors suspected that she suffered from a rare form of the disease and put her on a medication called methotrexate. After an initial improvement, her condition worsened. In 2016, she and Cohn underwent weight loss surgery. The pain spread to her hips and legs afterward, and she began to feel exhausted on a regular basis. She began cramping up when she exercised and started losing her mobility. A blood clot was ruled out, and muscle relaxants and steroids failed to provide relief. Shiacone was diagnosed with ALS in 2018, but the diagnosis was reversed a few months later. By then, her memory was starting to fail, and she was walking with a cane. Desperate for answers, she turned to the Undiagnosed Diseases Program at the National Institutes of Health, where specialists ruled out all suspected genetic causes for her condition. They discovered that she was suffering from something called adult onset cerebral folate deficiency, which was caused by a combination of weight loss surgery and the methotextrate that she took for suspected rheumatoid arthritis. Doctors prescribed folinic acid to restore Shiacone's dangerously low folate levels. They suspected that her condition was caused by more than just weight loss surgery and methotrexate, but that folinic acid would alleviate at least some of her symptoms. In 2022, she and Cohn told the Washington Post that there were still some abnormalities showing up in her tests, but that she's in a lot less pain and no longer walks with a cane. 4. New Car Smell Causes Years-Long Headache After buying a new car in 2002, Tom Wells began experiencing headaches whenever he was exposed to the smell of new cars, fresh paint, and similar chemical odors. He would later tell the Washington Post that the headaches were characterized by a burning sensation at the center of his head, which he likened to the feeling of someone sandpapering his brain. Wells had no history of headaches or any medical conditions that could be linked to his symptoms. A specialist diagnosed him with the sensitivity to volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, which are gases found in the odors that bothered him. He was told to avoid being near smells that triggered his symptoms, or his headaches would become more painful and last longer. It was easier said than done, as Wells learned. A lot of products have VOCs in them, including the furniture he had to return in 2008 when he got a headache that lasted for weeks. He continued to seek second opinions and treatment, but a brain scan turned up normal and steroids failed to alleviate his symptoms. When Wells noticed the smell of new carpet at a movie theater in Maryland one day in 2015, he decided to try to tough it out and get through the movie. It was followed by the worst headache yet, which lasted literally for years. He ended up in the ER, where a brain scan showed deep white matter lesions, which can indicate multiple sclerosis and a handful of other conditions. Wells tried several medications, but experienced temporary relief at best. A doctor in the Cleveland Clinic suspected he was suffering from an obscure condition called central sensitization, which is caused by the central nervous system intensifying its pain signals to the brain. The cause is unclear, and there's no magical treatment, but an antidepressant that also treats nerve pain has led to significant improvement for Wells, who still suffers from headaches, but has gotten them to a somewhat manageable level. 3. The Plague of Athens the Peloponnesian War began in 431 BC, following decades of rising tensions between the powerful ancient Greek city-states of Athens and Sparta. 
The violence was still raging the following year when a mysterious illness befell the locals in the Athenian port of Piraeus. It was unlike anything the society had ever experienced before and was followed by similar outbreaks elsewhere, including on the island of Lemnos in the Aegean Sea. Residents in Piraeus spread rumors that the Spartans had poisoned their wells. These beliefs were exacerbated by the fact that the disease didn't seem to affect the Spartans as badly as it plagued the Athenians. Within weeks of the initial outbreak, the plague had reached the heart of the walled city, and large numbers of people of various ages and backgrounds were falling ill. It began to spread even more rapidly after the Athenian leader Pericles relocated people from rural Attica to Athens. The plague continued for five years, with two more waves of the illness striking in 429 BC and 427 BC. Altogether, somewhere between 25 and 35 percent of Athens' population perished within a five-year period. The ancient Greek historian Thucydides, who survived the illness, described suffering from a fever, redness of the eyes, inflammation of the throat and tongue, bleeding, and bad breath. These initial symptoms were followed by sneezing, hoarseness, a harsh cough, discharges of bile, ineffectual retching, diarrhea, violent spasms, and insomnia. Thucydides wrote about seeing other sufferers' skin covered in blisters and of an unquenchable thirst. Doctors didn't know how to treat the illness, and what worked for one patient seemed to harm another, according to Thucydides, who wrote that some patients died alone in their homes without a caretaker when the rest of their household left from fear of catching the disease. Most survivors never caught the sickness a second time, and when they did, it typically wasn't fatal indicating that suffering from the illness built up some level of resistance. To this day, experts have never identified the mysterious pathogen that caused the plague. Some speculate that it could have been a form of bubonic plague, but the symptoms suggest otherwise. One study found evidence of typhoid fever in a mass grave from the time period, but critics pointed out that typhoid was common at the time and probably wasn't the source of the plague. Some researchers have noticed that the symptoms seem similar to Ebola, but proving this would be difficult because genetic evidence of Ebola is stored in RNA rather than DNA and breaks down more easily over time. If it was Ebola, there's a chance that scientists will never be able to confirm it 100%, but for now, the mystery remains unsolved. 2. Family of Five Suddenly Falls Ill While working from her Washington, D.C. home in late 2020, psychologist Brooke Stroud felt so ill she had to leave a video meeting. She later told the Washington Post that she'd felt off for days, but her symptoms took a sudden turn, making her feel drugged and developing into a 100-degree fever. That same day, her two children developed severe headaches and started vomiting. At first, the family suspected that they were suffering from the coronavirus, but they tested negative. Weeks dragged on as their symptoms continued. Just hours after arriving home to visit for the holidays, Stroud's son became extremely ill. The same thing happened a few days later after a family friend came to stay with them. Still sick herself, she underwent extensive medical tests, which turned up no sign of anything wrong. She noticed she felt better whenever she worked in a separate building on her property, and her daughter's condition improved when she walked outside, but they always got sick again within a few hours of their symptoms subsiding. The father of Stroud's house guests happened to be John Schieflin, an infectious disease expert John Schieflin at Tulane University. He suggested the family was experiencing carbon monoxide poisoning, but Stroud was initially dismissive. Doctors had never mentioned the possibility and she had a carbon monoxide detector. But to be sure, she bought a portable detector the next morning. It sounded immediately after she put the batteries in and turned it on she soon realized that her other detector didn't detect carbon monoxide, as she had thought. Tests at the scene showed that everyone in the house had elevated levels of the gas in their systems. Luckily, no one needed medical treatment and everyone recovered quickly. Firefighters discovered that the source of the leak was a loose furnace clamp, and it was quickly repaired. Stroud installed multiple carbon monoxide detectors in her home after the incident. She took the story to the Washington Post at the urging of her doctor, who encouraged her to warn other families about the dangers of the clear, odorless gas. 1. Massive Facial Swelling One morning in 2019, 
56-year-old Filipino carpenter Romulo Pilapil woke up with itchy eyes and a runny nose. He received medication for what seemed like a conventional case of sinusitis, but two weeks went by with no improvement in his condition. His face swelled up like a balloon, leaving medical professionals on the island of late baffled. They recommended traveling to Manila for treatment, but Pilapil's family couldn't afford it. His eyes eventually swelled shut and he had to stop working. Pilapil's wife worked as a street sweeper. His kids put studying on the back burner and took jobs to help support the family while also picking up the slack at home. They also became their father's caretakers. With no foreseeable ability for better medical care, Pilapil had no choice but to live with his debilitating condition. There have been no updates since the story first made international headlines, and it's unclear whether he ever accessed the treatment he needed or received a diagnosis. Thanks for watching. Would you rather suffer from an extreme sensitivity to daylight that forces you to be nocturnal, or from extreme motion sickness that places extreme limits on your ability to travel? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.